So today we're going to talk about food plot screens. We're going to talk about that annual food plot screen that people are planting right now. It's getting to be that time down south and it's quickly becoming that time here. I'll be planting ours in early June. But we want to talk about food plot screens today because they're such an important part of a successful parcel, a great hunting property, a great property design. You want to hide your access. You want to hide your food plots. You want to break your food plots up. You want to separate those deer. But the biggest thing is, is you want to keep the deer from knowing they're being hunted. And the food plot screen is a big part of that. However, there's so many varieties out there. There's so many choices out there. It seems like everybody's coming out with a food plot screen. Every week there's a new food plot screen offering. Okay, we've been doing this for 11 years. We've waded through all the stuff that does work and that doesn't work. And most of the stuff out there isn't going to work in a lot of the environments when it comes to October, November, folks. And we just want you to not be disappointed with the wrong choice when it comes to deer season. So we're going to talk about what I think is the best food plot screen and why. And we're going to talk about things you need to avoid and why. We've been doing this as long as anybody these food plot screens and we've got the right uh, product for you. Now the big question we're getting right now is how do I get rid of last year's food plot screen? We're getting pictures from all over the country from customers and it actually is something I like to see. Uh, 8 to 10 foot tall food plot screen that was planted last year and now they have to deal with uh, the crop residue that's left over. The reason I like to see that is because we made the right choice. They made the right choice by going with the HD food plot screen and it did its job. It stood all year. It stood all winter. They had a great screen during deer season and now they have to deal with it. I really like to see that. In fact, behind our house here, we're going to do a video in a couple of weeks once it warms up on how we take care of it. We've got seven feet standing behind the house yet after some brutal winter storms and some tough spring storms. But so what I tell folks is I've got two ways I deal with it. I take a brush hog behind a tractor, mow it high at about a foot tall, and then I come back with the brush hog right on the ground, chop it up, mulch it up really well and then come in with a tiller one pass or a disc two or three passes. All I want to do is rotate the dirt a little bit. Uh, break up that top surface so it's ready to plant again. Now around here, my option here is a riding lawnmower. I'll set the deck as high as I can. We'll go really slow and we'll chop up that first layer and then we'll set the deck a lot lower. Now you got to watch out for sticks and rocks so you don't damage the blade. We'll do a few passes to chop it up, mulch it up really nice and then a pass with the tiller or a couple disc passes and you're ready to plant again. So the big thing that I always tell folks it's very important that you don't plant more than two years, three at the most in the same spot because of the nutrients that it takes out of the ground. So what we'll do is we'll move the screen over and where the screen was, we'll do a soil builder, uh, some clover oats, uh, buckwheat, our soil builder blend uh, with some clover. But if it's outside of the food plot, say it's out in here, you want to make sure you terminate that before deer season because we don't want deer eating outside of the food plot. But again, rotate that screen. Uh, two years, three at the most. But again, it's really easy to get rid of brush hog or even a riding lawnmower. I would assume if you had uh, uh, one of those DR, uh, those DR portable brush hogs, I think that would work just fine as well. Now, here at Northwoods, we sell two different varieties of annual food plot screen. We do have a little bit of Egyptian wheat here, but it's mostly the HD food plot screen. Now, Egyptian wheat, we've been selling uh, from day one. That was our original screen. But the problem with Egyptian wheat is it just didn't stand. It just didn't winter very well. It didn't take the cold and uh, the snow, the ice, and it always seemed to be on the ground when I needed it the most, which led us to start looking at other varieties. But the one thing we found about Egyptian wheat, it seemed to be the only variety that would take a little bit of wet ground. Most of these other varieties didn't do well, especially the HD screen does not do well in wet ground. Now I'm not talking about standing water. I'm just talking about say you're on the bottom slope of a food plot that holds water in the spring and eventually it might dry out, but there's going to always be the tendency to be wet there. Uh, that's the only time we recommend Egyptian wheat. It will grow, but how, how the winter standability is, it's just not that great compared to the HD screen. You will get a early season screen, but you know, it just isn't going to last as long as the HD screen. But the other option is uh, we got a lot of folks, a lot of customers, friends in the deep south, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, down in that region, that they don't get the ice, the snow, the blizzards, the uh, extreme cold 
Egyptian wheat seems to work for them down there and we'll still ship a little bit down there. But by and large, let's say we get 100 calls this week for food plot screen, 98 of them I'm going to tell them uh, the HD screen uh, just because it's such a superior product to Egyptian wheat. Now, the reason we like the HD screen, height is the first one. Uh, we typically here plant mid-June and I get 12 to 13 feet. I've seen 16 feet here. I've seen 18, 19 feet. Uh, I believe it was one of our customers in Pennsylvania. That does look impressive, don't get me wrong, but I want to see 10 feet November 15th, which is our opening day of rifle season here in Michigan. That's when I'm impressed. And we've seen it consistently with the HD screen. Stronger. The strength on this is unbelievable. Uh, you know, they become vulnerable once they hit a couple of hard frosts and it dies. That's when the plant becomes vulnerable. But the only plant that I've found is the uh, variety that we use in the HD screen. It doesn't lose its strength. It holds on to that uh, stiffness like nothing else that we've ever tried. The standability then comes with that strength. Like I said before, we're getting pictures all over the country. Uh, again, here in our backyard, where people have to deal with 8 to 10 foot tall thatch. That standability is going to be from the day, uh, you know, let's say end of September when archery season starts or bow season starts, you're going to have great standability all the way into May the following year, albeit we don't really need a screen in April or May, but it's still standing. So that tells me it's still standing in November and December when we need it the most. Nothing I've planted has the standability that we have found with this HD screen. <clears throat> now, what are the things we want to avoid? Number one, and we talked about this a lot, you do not want food in your food plot screen. And the number one problem I see is when folks add milo or grain sorghum to it, uh, the theory is the short uh, plants are going to hold up the tall plants. Well, if you get a plant this tall with a big seed head on it that's very similar to corn, it becomes food in October. I've watched, we've planted milo for deer up here because we can't use corn. And you definitely do not want that in your food plot screen. Sun hemp, great product for building soil, great nitrogen producer, not that great for screen. Although it does get five to six feet tall, um, it's food though. We're making some food plot blends for some of our partners down in Georgia and Kentucky, and we're going to use sun hemp in it. Not something I want in my screen. Sunflower, same thing. Really tall, depending on what variety you get, but that's deer food. Those big leaves become deer food, not something you want in your food plot screen. Same with corn, beans, peas, buckwheat. That's all food. I mean, think about it. If this is your food plot or you're trying to hunt this area here, and you've got a screen right here, and you're trying to get in and out of here. The last thing we want is deer down here eating. So you don't want food in your food plot screen. Okay. Number two, the things that we avoid, and we found this out the hard way through years of testing, is sorghum Sudan grass quickly uh, falls after it frosts and dies, and I've seen rains take it down. Okay. Uh, same thing, BMR sorghum is a cow feed. You do not want that in your food plot screen because it's almost guaranteed to fall down when you need it standing the most. And that's mid to late October, early November up here. These varieties, we've tried probably a dozen varieties from multiple companies, and we have yet to find a sorghum Sudan grass that can make it past probably November 5th. Now, the one I kind of giggle with this one is kind of funny because it's the newest buzzword in the habitat seed industry. Strengtheners in your screen. We need to add strengthener. We need to have a stiff uh, variety to hold up everything else. Well, if you need to hold uh, or add a strengthener uh, to your products, it's probably because you made a poor choice on the blends that you're creating. So I'm going to show you something here. This is a four pound bag of our HD food plot screen. It's four pounds of strengthener. Okay. We don't add anything to it. We don't need to combine it with anything. We don't need any fluff for different varieties or blends because six years ago when we made this discovery, we've discovered we've got the strongest possible variety of sorghum we could find and we've tested it against a dozen other ones and it's the same thing every time our HD screen is still standing in these other varieties. You know, the Egyptian wheat sorghum combos, Egyptian wheat sorghum, grain sorghum combos are down on the ground. Okay, we do not add anything to our screen. We do not need a stiffener. It's the best product that we could find. And that's what's in our bag, nothing else. So, you know, I just want people to understand uh, and think about, you know, what's going in their ground. We've been doing this, like I said, I believe yet 11 years now, we've been messing with these screens. Uh, we were the second company that I know of 
that had a food plot screen and we've been working on it every year. Um, I just, you know, a lot of the stuff that you're being sold now is stuff that we were trying eight, nine years ago and finding out that it doesn't work when you need it the most, that October, November timeframe. So, you know, I just want people to understand that you got to be careful what you're buying because you don't want to be disappointed um, late October, early November, and you walk out your property and your screen's on the ground. But, you know, Mother Nature will throw us some curveballs and we, we can have failures. You know, there's, there's, some, there's just some weather situations that nothing's going to survive. You know, we've got a picture we'll show you at the end of this video where there's a white pine down in a field, but our HD screen is still standing. But I've also seen winds take every screen down. I've seen sorghum sudan grass on the ground. I've seen miscanthus on the ground. I've seen corn on the ground. Um, but I've seen a lot of trees on the ground and our HD screen still standing. Now, is that going to happen all the time? Maybe, maybe not. But I will tell you this, there's nothing stronger on the market than what we've got in our HD screen product. So just something to think about, folks. Make wise choices. There's a lot of offerings out there and a lot of them are going to uh, disappoint you. Uh, but we've got a lot of time, effort, and money into researching this HD screen. And I can guarantee you it's the best one on the market. So thanks for watching, folks, and we'll see you in a few days.